It's what it's called. Yeah, we know. Oh, but, uh... two years of this of this fucking nonsense so obviously that was prophetica from the new seven inch pell fuck that fucking rules i was jamming it today you need to get that shit really cool really i think dylan mentioned the bass tone that's kind of what I, I i like how and i mentioned it to paul how the the bass tone has been higher in the mix lately that shit rules yep so but yeah there you go so yeah two years of this shit crazy uh, thanks everybody that's ever watched it or tuned in and all that all that shit, right? So uploaded. There's a new thing on the channel today. JD's 
gear notes thing, go watch that video. It's cool. So anyway, enough of that nonsense. Let me bring on my first guest, Miss the Mayhemic Slaughter of the Heavens himself, Mr. Paul Lady. How you doing, Paul? What's up? How's it going? Good man, good man. So yeah, somebody else mentioned the bass tone. Uh, we were talking earlier before we came on live about the bass tone on the latest Pro Fanatica records was it's has bit up in the mix. So I, I think it adds it adds something to it. I don't know. I don't know if that was done intentionally or or, or what happened with that. Any any uh any like insight on that? Yeah, uh that's Malcolm on bass from Anti Scene and he played on the Broken Jew seven inch too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so pretty much like i always go back to u.s black metal being kind of rooted in punk a little bit so u.s styles like really heavy on the bass and uh it's kind of up in the mix we definitely right. had it turned up the dis disgusting blasphemies if you remember that bass was really loud too right that was gel so i kept uh telling them the mix is good just you gotta bump the bass up more more than you think you should and uh then we'll be good so yeah <laughs> de definitely on purpose yeah i mean i, th I think it's cool it just it, it adds to i don't know the, it makes the recording sound more raw yeah uh, uh just just everything about it it's like i don't know it's just it's it's a cool cool sound i think on the, on the recording and uh I noticed it. I think it was the uh, what was the EP? I'm, I can't remember the name, but it was like the blue cover. What the hell is it called? The last, uh, the, I think the last thing it, you did on All to the Virgin Whore. Either. Yeah, yeah, that one had yeah. had, had cool, cool. And, and another thing I noticed uh, uh, the drumming on this. I mean, you still hear your, you know, you still have the Paul Ledney like, you know, style going, but uh, there's a lot more of the like more punk beats. I, I would it say. Is. On this. It's like uh, the beats are kind of what I call like when when crossed before what it turned into, like yeah, political shit. It was like more raw, like that band Disrupt from the U.S. Yeah, like that kind of D beat, but uh, more like with power, I think. Yeah, I I I, I get a feel of like like Hellhammer too, like that. Yeah, totally. the total Hellhammer. So, What's weird, and a lot of people ask me this, is like, uh, for me, I always start like on the downbeat, like that do that do that do that do. I'm never like bass drum in in uh, hi hat first, like boom pa boom pa yeah. boom pa. It it sounds like I don't know, I don't like it. Like seven churches is always on the downbeat. You yeah. know, the, the drumming on that is not great, but it. it Another thing is like, uh, uh, I guess I'll say the first kind of thrash beat that I heard was uh, the song Iron Maiden lot when they used to do it live with Clive Burr. It was yeah. pretty fast and it was like that. It's like more of a pounding beat rather than like a pushing beat. Yeah, no, I mean you could totally hear it because like on your uh, on your. Uh... On even even the older recordings, you you you, you could tell you start with that fucking downbeat uh, a it, lot. And now that you mentioned that, yeah, I could totally hear that Iron Maiden song. You know, uh, the 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 type the Iron Maiden Iron Maiden song totally has that style. I never even yeah never even thought about that. My shit like comes from that pretty much like, <laughs> one little beat. The thing is with that style though, it's like it the uh, to get in and out of it is harder like uh yeah if you do that like old slayer beat like bass drum first and yeah. hi-hat it there's more options so you could uh you could start a fill and then like exit the, the like start that beat with a fill and then exit that beat with a fill and go to maybe something slower on the ride there's like very few options uh, like the way I do it. So it kind of gets monotonous, which I like. I like the same thing over and over, like Black Death Metal. But uh, it's it's a little bit tricky to like switch it up. It's kind of harder to keep it like fresh the way yeah. I do it. Yeah, well, one thing I noticed with your style, and I mean, 
I, 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 like you have your own unique style, I think, but when going into like a field transition, I, I, I noticed like you, you're doing the down beat and you'll kind of double kick into a, into like a feel like on, at least that's what I hear whenever, whenever I listen to it. It is. Yeah. That, that I'm doing that. Yeah. 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 And which is, I mean, I've, I've, uh, I think I borrowed that on, on a couple of occasions myself. Yeah, cool, cool. <laughs> because it's, I'm like, yeah, that works. It fucking works, you know? It's weird uh, where my shit comes from, too. Like, you'd be surprised. I, I don't know where that came from, though. But, yeah. Uh, you know, of course, it's like the person's own take on it. But where they got the original idea and be like, oh, shit, let me try that. or how to get you know yeah. you're talking about the thing where i'm like it's yeah the, yeah yeah that thing like on uh, what is it a final order christ was like yeah 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 that's that that yeah i uh i yeah i've listened i've listened to your songs you know on a couple of occasions so yeah <laughs> I, I i i've uh you know the more you listen to something the more you pick up on things right so yeah uh, sure uh, but yeah, so did did you see uh, Maiden with Clive Bird? Did you see him live? No, no. Oh, okay, I was like that had. To, I was like maybe I didn't know because a lot of times people like people begin drums. They'll it'll be like seeing somebody play live, and it kind of that kind of gets the ball rolling, and you know, yeah. little, like to spark in them. I don't know if there was anybody like that for you. Uh, a lot of my shit, believe it or not, it comes from Tommy Aldridge. So it's oh kind yeah. Of, it's kind of like the way he hits properly. I, I like that. Tommy I can't, I can't name any names because I'll be like people. You'd be surprised at who I don't like on drums. Like <laughs> well, classic, right. classic rock people. Yeah. I can't, I can't get into it. In fact, uh, we have like a Memorial Day picnic at our house here with like, you know, relatives and. Uh -huh. Uh, a couple of years ago, my mother-in-law's friend was uh, dating this guy, Gary, who was like my first drum teacher when I was a kid, believe it or not. It just worked out. So he, he was there. We got reacquainted. He, he told me what it was like, uh, you know, training me like as, as an eight or nine year old. Yeah. And, uh we were talking about who he liked and who I liked. And he, this guy is good on drums. Like still he's more jazz now, but his chops are like fucking crazy good. Yeah. And uh, he was naming some people that I won't name. And I'm like, that guy's ass. And he's like, what do you mean? <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you're way better than him. So I see that constantly. <laughs> Um, when I when I talk to uh, Jim Rowe every once in a while, it, usually I get to see him like every couple of years. Yeah. And we talk about drums, of course, and drummers. And he's he's better than all of his heroes. Let's put it that way. Jim fucking is amazing. Yes, I agree. Jim is so, so underrated, too, I think. He is. I mean, I know what I can do and I can't do. Usually, like when we're playing live the opening band drummers all of the drummers are better than me more skilled they don't have their own style but their right. chops their chops are good they're way yeah. better than me you know yeah and, and that's fine they're younger they play all day yeah uh, but yeah that i guess that's it what about uh well somebody mentioned mickey d were you ever a fan of his drum yeah of course of course, like solid. So when I see people that I don't like right away, it's people that don't really hit the cymbals properly. They just kind of like bang on the cymbals, if that makes sense. And and they hit them too hard. So it actually chokes the sound. It gets the opposite. Hmm. And my pullback after hitting anything is just as important to me as like the way down is and i'm kind of like a stickler for that in fact i i was at a show uh last friday and uh 
the drummer, I, I want to say, I don't even know what kind of music it, it was. It was the drummer, the last band, it was like, um, it wasn't post anything, but it was like kind of not poppy. I don't know. It, it'll come to me, but yeah. the guy was good. The drums weren't mic'd. So they just had like a mic for the vocals. Like you'd see like at a VFW hall, but the guy kind of was modifying for that. And he mm -hmm. backed off, he backed off the cymbals. <laughs> so it really, uh, it, I, it can be done. Yeah. But I don't see much modifying. A lot of people use triggers and stuff. Yeah. Like my complaint with like playing gigs is like this house kit that everybody has. <laughs> so like I'm bringing, oh, the first drummer's bringing his kit and it's awesome. And then I get there and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. But uh, we could make it, you know, I could make it sound good. What about, I, could, uh, I could I could work with it, but I have to modify shit, you know. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, I played with drummers that, you know, they 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 make it work basically. You know, they it's like you know, I it, do I ever, do I want to play on this? No, but I'll make it fucking work, and it'll still sound like like when you play, it'll still sound like Paul Paul cool. playing the fucking drums. You know what I mean? Uh, so because I think shit, man. What am I? What am I uh, most favorites because you know a lot of my favorite shows and anybody's favorite shows are shows they saw when they were young and growing up and all that but one of my favorite sets of recent times when when you guys played uh in houston at the white swan with like imprecation and oh and, yeah and witchcraft yeah i think yeah. that show was i mean your set was was like just on point man i was like cool. holy shit you know it was like it was like one of my favorite favorite uh recent uh, uh gigs and there there aren't really too many you know that do that too many more but that one and uh that band verathron from greece came and played and they were just just fucking uh, uh, amazing as well awesome. but uh it's um, funny you say that zolrak's gonna be super psyched that you said that <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean i i, I know him i know him rather well obviously of but, course uh, but yeah, that was that was a really really good set by you guys, and I kind of felt bad for that Finnish band because they got sandwiched in between like Imprecation and you guys. I'm like, hey, you know those those are pretty. Those two bands have been around a while. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, you know, whatever. I, I what like is. they're they're like brothers of ours, witchcraft. So we yeah. we dig those dudes, and they're playing the proper yeah. style. But uh, what's weird is like that particular show it was good but there's a lot of shows that we get off stage and I'm, we're back there we just walk backstage to grab a water and we're like oh that sucked i like i couldn't hear anything and then the people right. later will be like oh that ruled <laughs> yeah, yeah so it's good you know even even like what we think and i don't I'm not saying it happened there but there's a lot of times where i i can't hear the vocals good in the monitor so i'm like pushing too hard I don't know if it, if it's coming across like that. Yeah. Uh, but I guess on stage it always sounds different, as you know. So. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I mean, I, I've been there myself. But so let, let's stay on. I'll name a couple other drummers. I, we're talking about Kim Russ, the Merciful Fate. I always thought he was a fucking amazingly underrated drummer that gets lost in Merciful Fate because everybody in that band is fucking amazing on on their kit. So I don't know if you were a fan of his style. I was, and uh, he did some shit. So here's something else, okay? Like the way I listen to stuff is like I almost like can't even. I don't know if any people listening now feel this, but I almost can't enjoy it because I'm like analyzing it. I know how he <laughs> did this, or I would have done this differently. But yeah, looking back, that guy was way ahead of his time too, and the beats that he chose. Right, right. Like a and dangerous some, like, meeting is oh, pretty man. badass. Just and his fills were like just, I, I don't know the word to use it. I mean, I, I don't know the word to describe them, but something about his fills, even his fills were like catchy. To me. Yeah, they they like worked. It was like a good choice. And, and it bands like that and guys that play drums like that, 
you have to think they practiced a lot with the band. They might have worked it out and said, you know what, I'm going to skip this or just do this here and yeah. like kind of trial and error. Yeah. Like a lot of people now, we they don't get it, get to do that because a lot of people live far away and they just do online shit, which is cool too, yeah. you know. Yep. One one last guy. One last guy uh, before we move on. I, I I believe you're a fan of Poison Idea, but uh, yeah, Sl- Hi- Slayer Hippie. That guy to me was fucking awesome. Yeah, really. Uh, like one of the best ever. Like, I agree. He's one of the guys that I. I I haven't heard too many other people do this. Maybe they did, and I didn't catch it. But he would do a fill, go back to the snare, and then finish the fill on the floor toms. And I rarely hear anybody do that. In fact, I, I've only heard him do it. Yeah, he's um, he's just fucking amazing. On oh, that fucking, was it a uh, uh, Feel the Darkness album? God, yeah. fucking A, man. Yeah. I, it's kind of funny. <sighs> like, when I pick that up, uh, I remember the day I got it. I got it at Malcolm's store. And uh, I popped it in and I was driving to see Incantation and meet Jim Stanick. And I remember driving over the Tapestry Bridge and I was like, fuck, this is so good. I couldn't believe how good it was. Yeah. And, and I never think that. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, like uh, I said, he, he took Poison Idea to a, to a different fucking totally. stratosphere. Totally. I mean, the old guy was cool too. What he did worked. Well, yeah, of course. But I of think course. like he was like the the driving force. I don't know if the band now or the remaining members would admit it or think that, but he was the guy that kind of propelled them. I I feel. Yeah, I mean that 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 intro on uh on just to get away. Da, 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 yeah. Da, 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 I was like, come on, man. That's just yeah. It's yeah. like. Just that, unreal, man. That was totally big influence on me. Oh, yeah? yeah totally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. like, think about it. Our, our, that split with Massacre came out uh, a good year and a half, two years yeah. after that, Feel the Darkness. So, yeah. Yeah. I can, I, you know, now that I think about it, I can, I can, I can kind of, kind of see it or hear it a little bit. Uh, but yeah. So, Prof, uh, are you still? Is the lineup with Profanatica still the same two guys, or is there somebody that I think somebody new joined lately, or am I? Am yeah. I mistaken? Yeah. Um, so basically, me and the new guitarist Will did the f- new full length for Season of Mist, which they have. It's uh, I don't know what state it's at, but the we just approved the artwork. Like the layout, nice. so everything's good to go. I don't know how long shit takes a while nowadays. Yes, but uh, we're going to Europe at the end of April, and uh, we're going with that band uh, Necrobode from Portugal, and uh, Adam's gonna play bass. So yeah, th- it's like the same kind of core guys. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Speaking of speaking of speaking of uh of artwork, this uh is did you do this? Yeah. Yeah, I, I knew what I saw. Like that's totally <laughs> that's totally Paul right there. <laughs> I like uh, that. I like that you have that. No, I haven't got it yet. But I, I found this picture. I I found this picture online. I uh. I kind of like when you get it and you feel it, the whole feel of it is kind of cool. I'm, I'm kind of proud of that thing. Yeah. Um, and he- Hell's Headbangers did this one, right? Yeah. 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 They always do. They always deliver on what, you know, they say they're going to do. They at do. least, at least in, in my, my workings with them. Yeah, but, for uh, sure. But yeah, I like, I like, I don't know if, I like how, and I don't know if this was intentional or not, but when I see that, I it feels like it's an old sleeve because you can see the ring wear kind of thing. I don't know if that was something. That yeah, was, of course. Okay, yeah, that's that. Yeah, we I think that we put that in. Yeah, that's cool, and I think. Uh, let me see. 
I think it I think it has the same kind of thing on the back cover if I if I remember. Yeah, that's right. So that this is fucking cool as shit too. So yeah, kind of like uh, you know I've had this record for fucking thirty five years kind of look. You know it's, it's cool yeah. Shit. Cool, yeah, cool. But uh, now this. This record you can only get directly from Hell's Headbangers. I think that's what I had, I had read somewhere. Yeah, I don't have any. No, <laughs> no, no distros. I mean, I we got one. Yeah, for us, but so yeah. So speaking of drummers, really quick, another person who's better than his heroes is uh, Matt Hefner. Because <laughs> wow. that's. Yeah, I. He, well, he's gonna love. He's gonna fucking shit when he hears when, I, when I, he hears this. The thing is, though, like, cause we were, I forget where we were, uh, in the green room. It might have been MDF. Yeah. But we were talking. He's like, "Do you like this guy?" And I'm like, "No." And he's like, "And I don't want to. I'd rather not mention names." But he's yeah. like, "What about this guy?" And I'm like, "Dude, no. <laughs> you're you're better than all of those guys." Yeah, he's he's. He's take he's one of the he's one of those guys that has taken like the people that influenced him and made his kind of style out of it. Yeah, and and I did that too. And there's also something to be said for like if some you see somebody play whatever instrument and it like affects you, you have like even they might not be the best, but they might be doing themselves really good, and then. It then you walk away with that memory, be like, I like this dude, or I yeah. dig whoever it is. He's man, he's I met I met Matt when he was just some scrawny little kid, right? I'm a, quite a few years older than he is, but he's he just worked really hard over the years and and just got better and ended up just making his own his own style, which is you know nowadays, nowadays it's most people are just kind of sound like somebody else i you know it's hard it's hard to to create your own style and sound and i guess that takes time you know over time it's like maybe 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 that that's what it takes but he's yeah he's he obviously he's a good drummer because yeah you know i've I've played in i've played in bands with him so um but Uh, yeah no that's cool he's gonna yeah Another, uh, this guy's got to be one of the best right now. Arthur from Sadistic is oh. so, so fucking smooth. But I haven't talked to him in detail about who he likes. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? Like as a drummer. Yeah. Like, uh, Sadistic Intent? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, Ar- that Arthur. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're super, like, super tight live. Whenever they play it, obviously that, that comes from the drummer, right? So yeah, always. Yeah. So that's cool. Let me see. I had a couple other things to ask you about. Let me see if I can. Oh. So oh, let, let me. So if anybody in the chat has any any questions for Paul, actually I did. Ray, Ray, my buddy Ray, which you know, had asked about New Halo Hedge. Anything in the works or, or with that? Uh, I'm thinking about it. Okay. So there I want to do it, but it's it's really time consuming, and it and it, which, like once I start, I'll, I'll like kind of stick with it. I don't really want to start now, but I yeah. am think like during the day I am thinking about it. I'd yeah. like to do another seven inch with yeah. Hells, but they want like another full. I think I, they'll do the seven inch if I like push for it. Yeah, but uh. uh I have three unreleased Night Feeble Savior songs we can use. Okay, cool. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. <laughs> so it really takes long, like, for me to put it together, like, the way I want, it takes, like, maybe two or three hours for, like, a minute of that shit wow. that you hear. Yeah, it's, like, a, it takes a long time. Yeah. Um, the way I want, like, want to do it, like, like the last one, the table of uncreation, it was like kind of more planned out, more starts and stops, and less like freestyle noise. Yeah, which, which I like that too. I just, I wanted this to be more uh, for real, kind of. Yeah. Well, hell, didn't you do a? 
Didn't you do a handful or maybe one live show as Hobbleheads? Uh, yeah, it didn't come off the best. I need to okay. redeem. And and if I like, I'm thinking of I'm always like looking for people too. I'm right. waiting for like the stars to align and somebody that might be good with a uh, a sampler or something. Yeah. I Thank do have know. ideas. I got lots of ideas. Cool, 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 cool. There you go, Ray. He, he had asked me. He said, "Yeah, ask him about about Howlheads, because you know he's a Howlheads fucking he freak." He is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a good question. Uh, what got you into noise stuff, and who are what some of your favorite noise artists, or you know, if there are any? Uh, what do you mean noise? Like, what do you think? I guess I guess he's talking because the Hallowhead stuff is kind of I guess some people would call it kind of uh, evil noise or something I don't know yeah I guess it could be black noise like it started that like I sampled a guitar and a sampler and then played the notes really low mm. and then from there you couldn't really hear the changes so I was like let's just have no guitar changes or riffs just that one monotonous uh, note. And I'll sing and play drums over that. So I really haven't heard uh, shit that influenced me for that. It's kind of like yeah. my own creation. But yeah. I, I there there are other things like that. I get it. Yeah. Well, I haven't I haven't gotten. I don't know if the the let's talk about this somewhat. I guess it's it's something that's been brewing for a while, but I guess. You actually have something. I, I don't think it's out quite yet, but I think there's a song out there people can listen to. Uh, um, yeah, that I just got those today, as a matter of oh, fact. Oh, okay. So they're out. Oh, cool. And that's me and Malcolm and uh, PP Duvet, who sang in the Murder Junkies. The thing is with that project, though, I ran into the same kind of shit that I ran into like with Gigi back in the day, which you've heard that story. Yeah. And like what I what I ultimately wanted like all right, picture like the pale fuck seven inch. Yeah. But me directing everything and like kind of calling the shots and then Gigi Allen on vocals like cooperating. It would never happen in a million years. <laughs> but I but I did try to make that happen. And uh it would have been monumental, I think. Like yeah. next level shit. Um, but not everybody's into that vision, and I can't force it. So I like the seven inch. It, there's like a Bobby cover, uh, Cop Clan, that me and Malcolm used to play like many years. I don't know. I want to say back in 94. So some of the riffs and shit are old. Yeah, um, I think that's the song. I think that's the song I heard. I think that's on the uh, the Hell's Headbangers like band it camp is? or okay. some shit. All right, yeah. cool. The the Cop Clan. Yeah. Um, oh, cool, cool. Oh, actually, Ray, where to go? Ray says he has that five inch late cut EP that I came across. <laughs> of course he does. Of course yeah. he does. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. yeah. So Bloody Apostles. So yeah, I mean it's it's. I mean, what I heard, it's it's very, you know, kind of dirty punk, raw, just it is. sounding stuff, you know? it's my, my problem, and it's not really a problem, but it's like a preference, let's say. If we're going to have that, uh, like, Southern style, and I don't, the only word I get, like, any kind of twanginess or anything like that, yeah, I felt needs to be offset with like a really deeper, nastier guitar sound that's low tuned, so it could kind of offset that a little bit. So it would sound nasty, even even for playing like a punk riff that's like not quite evil or anything. If that makes sense, it could yeah. be a normal sounding punk rock or rockish song. But I think if the guitar was like really brutal, it would help offset that and make it more nasty. Yeah, I mean, I I, I could totally, I, I agree with that, and I could, yeah, totally agree with that. Uh, 
So that, oh, this is the, I think this is the, no, this is that five inch thing that Ray was talking about. Uh -huh. <laughs> so there you go. There weren't very many of those. Uh, no, Malcolm put that out on his label. So yeah, and I think it's two tracks if I remember correctly. He's got a, he does TPOS records. He's had that label for a long, long time and he's got good shit on there. You'd be surprised like at who he's got some bigger type people ordered from him. And he puts shit on Discogs, I guess. People like to collect it. Yeah. Okay. Here's here's the uh, here's the the ad that I found for the Bloody Apostle on uh, Bloody Apostles yeah. on 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 Hell's Headbangers. So that's out now. You heard it here first. It is out. Uh, is I it? know. It's got well one two three six tracks. But yeah, go check it out if you want to. Uh, I don't. I couldn't find anything like to to be able to play here. I think there might be some live stuff. If you look on YouTube, there might be something out there, but if we you want to uh, hear it. Same studio as the Pale Fuck. Pretty much like the same setup, too. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you said that. Is Oh, yeah. shit, hold on. Hold on. Is this the studio? I forgot where I got this photo, but I found it online. Let me see. Where the hell did I do it? I have a photo of the uh, some studio setup. This if you do, if you If you do have it, don't mention the name. Okay, I don't know the name, but is that it? That's it. Okay. Yeah. So that's where you recorded the the Pelfuck seven inch and the Bloody Apostle seven inch. Yeah, that is probably well with the same guy I did like Black Perversion, in many years ago in his old space we did uh, to throw the Son of God there. Oh shit. Yeah, so it's like the same guy. This That's time awesome. when we we tracked there, uh, but we had help from uh, Arthur Risk who mastered the new one, which nobody's really heard. Right, and that's, uh, that's well, you mentioned it. You, you mentioned it, kind of. It's in the label's hands now, right? Yeah, Season of Mist has it. Yeah. So how's it been with them? I think last time I talked to you, I don't think the 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 uh, the album you did with them was out yet how how's it been working with season of mist um it's fine it's good oh like the you know it's, it's like working with anybody else they just uh it takes a long time to press this shit i guess nowadays it does yeah that's that's what it's actually speeding up a little bit i, I heard. heard that yeah so it's not like a any more like 18 month bullshit you know I know Malcolm was saying because Malcolm actually on TPOS his label he's putting out the uh, Provenatica live on twelve inch. Oh, nice! The one and that I you kinda, did? Yeah, I kind of helped him with the layout a little bit, uh, and I got a test pressing. It sounds good. Cool. Yeah. So the, he, I think, was responsible for recording some of those old shows. Too. Oh, okay. He has like this mobile unit that he used to take out and just record. Back then, I'd be like, "Yeah, whatever, just it's cool," <laughs> you know. Yeah, that was one of the. How, how many? So I think we talked about it when we, when we did the long episode. But Necroscope did like four, five releases, something like that. I think so. Yeah, I hated it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's like sucks. Doing yeah. like a distro slash label. Like yeah. I remember, like I'd be sitting there and checking email or whatever. My wife's like, "Oh, we got two orders," and I'm like, "Oh, god damn it! <laughs> this fucking sucks." I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate it. I'm not good at it. <laughs> yeah, it sucks, man. That's that that takes some serious fucking commitment to. It does. I mean, uh, you know, whoever does that, hey, uh, you know, much respect, right? Yeah, for sure. They're like <laughs> the hardest working people on the planet. I think that Mike, Mike, uh, took over like the orders for me. Yeah. And then uh, when he stopped, he introduced me to Chase and them. Okay. The bro the brothers. That's yeah, yeah. Happened. Yeah, the uh, 
was I going to say? The uh, fuck, I lost my train of thought. Oh, speaking of labels, Roy Fox, what's up, Roy? Macroharmonic Roy. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, doing labels is just. I, I did it for for a few years, and it, that shit sucks. Yeah, like especially nowadays. That's what I was gonna say. Nowadays, we're like, "Hey, I sent you my fucking eight bucks. Where's my shit?" You know. <laughs> I know. <Fuck> that <laughs> you know. Uh, I I don't want to like when I had these Provenatica hoodies. It took me so long to get everybody's out, and I mean like a year and a half. And everybody's like getting pissed. I'm like, I'm getting to it. I, you know, it, yeah. it just oh, sucked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's... I'm pretty sure I got everybody now, but I just yeah. don't want, I, I don't want anybody sending me money for anything anymore. <laughs> I know. It's just like, it's just too much, man. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Roy said he was at the very first Pro Fanatica show, he thinks. Where, uh, where was the very first Pro Fanatica show? That was uh, a G Willikers, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Down in... We called it Philly, but I think it was like Pensalkin, right? New Jersey. Yeah. Pensalkin, New Jersey. That's, I, I, I only know that. I knew that then because all the video trading list, that was like, there were so many videos from G Willikers. And I remember Pensalkin, New Jersey. And, and the, you know, the, that's how I came to know the infamous, infamous G Willikers. So. I think like when I look back at that like first show, I thought it was pretty good. Like I we ripped through our set, so yeah. I had no complaints. It was really short. That's kind of like all we had. So a lot of times people are like, "Oh, it seems like Paul Ledney's pissed off and just leaves the drum kit," and I'm like, "That's all the material we had." Yeah, but we just yeah, if you, you know if you, those old videos of you guys playing like. 9091 is like I think you guys would like leave the feedback going and that was that was kind of the end of the set. Yeah. Correctly. Yeah. And it looked we would burn through it and everybody's like, that's it. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can play uh yeah, what do you want us to play to play the set again? But uh but yeah, that was uh oh somebody asked something earlier. Uh, speaking of playing live. What are what are some of your do you have any songs that you like really enjoy playing live? Like Profanatica uh -huh. songs or anything? Yeah. Uh that song Prayer and Eclipse. It was on the EP. And it was on uh, the second track on the uh for the Season of Mist album. Yeah. I like that one. It's uh it might be my favorite song to play live, actually, because it's got all the elements, like a couple fills that pounding beat a really slow beat where i'm kind of zoned in on the hi-hat yeah and uh i like kind of like the vocal patterns of that one cool there you go there's, yeah. there's your there's your answer um uh, i was i was i thought uh i don't know if you guys play spilling holy blood was that ever one uh, do you still guys play, do you still play that yeah one yeah yeah sure okay yeah, that one. I was, that one was always. It had a lot going on on that one. Uh, like those little drums, those like. Or yeah, I was. Yeah. I thought that was cool. I was like, cool, cool. Yeah. So. All right. Um. Uh, so, sh are you guys? You, you mentioned the European tour. Is there any any U.S. stuff in the works? Uh, I think in June. And. I'll just say this, okay, without mentioning any names. We're tr the if you saw the list of bands that we want to come with us, you'd be like, "Oh my god, like each one of the bands is like badass." Yeah. We we like them, you like them. They're also a perfect fit in us together with these bands would be like monumental. Yeah. And uh nobody could do it or wants to do it. I say want to because like some of the excuses I've been getting yeah are, are like just bullshit you know what I mean yeah uh, so I don't know maybe it's not cool that I'm like talking so openly about it but if somebody has a job that's cool if they 
don't want you know here's the other thing i can't expect everybody to drop their day-to-day shit to like right. join my dream i get <laughs> it but like doing something at a little convenience store is not a career you know you don't have to pant like just fuck that like yeah. i'm a screen you know me and the guitarist are screen printers during the day we're just dipping out and we're going and that's yeah. it so we are going we have a couple of people that said yes they're good cool. um and it should be good we're definitely going to hit texas i think it's going to be over 30 dates and we've never oh. toured we never toured the u.s yeah that's yeah so, that's fucking wild yeah i mean it should uh, be good yeah oh somebody asked about final final hour of christ i think i had a video like queued up but yeah it was uh it was you guys playing that song probably a couple of years ago or something like that. So I'm sure I think you guys saw, I, I think when I saw you, you'll play like the split LP, like in order. I think I've seen that. Before. Yeah. Um, we still play that. We're going to play it on this run. Actually, Ooh. it will play it in the U S too. That uh, I want to say is the first Profanatica song we came up with. Yeah. I mean, that's fucking, that is God, you know. But uh, uh, oh, I saw. I don't know if it's happened or it's happening. Speaking of that split, you actually—I know it's different band members in the band, but you actually played a gig with Massacre, right? We did. Yeah, how was that? Uh, they're really good, really good, and it's like really tight death metal. And yeah. uh, the thing about them is you could tell they practice as a band yeah like at least weekly if not multiple times they were like dead on and and we didn't and that's because you know we didn't really we don't really have to per se because you know we'll do like a suitcase practice and run through everything we have our set lists like weeks and weeks ahead so everybody's kind of going over shit and we have like a certain way that we uh do it um yeah but i was kind of impressed with those dudes nice i'd I'd met them when we were in columbia they came out to support us uh first time i saw them though i don't know did you see them when they came through Uh, yeah i think i think i saw them in houston yeah yeah super super tight same same thing here just like ripping through a set yeah i like that yeah totally hey i got a uh cast just popped up uh so let me and like I mentioned earlier, if, if there's things you need to do or if you want to hang out, I'm I'm good with 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 both of them. So I'll probably go, but we just I'm probably gonna have to come back on because we just touched on shit. Yeah, tell, yeah, yeah. No. Tell tell Kaz I said what's up. Well, you can tell him yourself if you want. All right, all right. <laughs> what's, what's up, Kaz? <laughs> oh, you're muted. You're muted. Can't hear you. Let me unmute. What's up, boy? There you go. What's up? Good to see you guys. What's going on? What's up, man? You uh, you know Paul, obviously. Yeah, of course. Boy. Yeah. Did you guys ever play shows together, like in the early we days? We did. A couple times, yeah. A few yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the old days. Good times. G. Willikers days were great. Early they 90s. were good. Yeah. And honestly, if if Chris Gamble and Alex hadn't invited us down there to play, we probably would have never played out. Really? Because nobody in New York supported us and nobody in Jersey supported us. We wow. just could I tried. We're right. all friends. Everybody, like huh. the non support, they're all brothers. Right. Um, we were like not we were like on the pay no mind list. But Alex and Chris, you know, they were the man and they were like, yeah. yo, get down here and play. We're Absolutely. We'll, we'll have you. That crucifier show was like totally evil. Yeah, there was like a time. go upside down, right? Yeah, the cross. Was, yeah, yeah, there was a cross, but there was like smoke kind of like flowing over the drums. I remember yeah. going, "Holy shit!" Yeah, this is good. We had a good time, <laughs> that time man. <laughs> well, fuck. I mean, both both bands are playing now. Maybe maybe that can fucking happen again. You know, we're yeah, trying. Uh, yeah, we're trying to do that. Yeah, fuck yeah, it'll happen. Man. Fuck yeah, dude. All right, uh, so Francisco, I'm gonna duck out. Yeah. 
Hey, I appreciate um, you coming on, man. It's it it cool talking to you. I haven't talked to you in a while. So. All right, man. And you've been doing this two years? Two fucking years. Wow. I, I can't, I don't know. I, don't, I can't believe it. I mean, I guess, you know, when you get old, you don't really leave the house as much anymore. So, <laughs> you know, what, what are you going to fucking do, you know? Yeah. I know. I like it. <laughs> All right, uh, let's well, let's do this again. Oh, absolutely. I'll, I'll, right. I'll, I'll be in touch. All right, cool. See you All guys. Thanks, man. All right, Paul. All right. There you go, Mr. Cool, fucking man. Paul. Yeah, man. Thanks. That's awesome. Thanks. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. I was like, dude, I, it's been two years. I was like, I got, I got to do something big, man. I got to fucking, you know, you and Paul. I was like, yeah, fucking. I, I, I can't think of a, a fucking better. Better fucking guest list than that's cool. Than man. You and Paul I it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, you and I mean, he, he mentioned about how they both crucifier. I mean, I I guess you guys. I mean, the the people that like crucifier really love crucifier in the beginning. But did you guys have any of that fucking like same? I don't want to say problems, but kind of like he was talking about with Pro Fanatica early on. Since you were you were doing stuff a little different than everybody. Yeah, I think uh, no, we we had we had a lot of um, we had a lot of support back then. Cool. Um, it was a, a you know a, a smaller. It's sort of like a smaller circle, but they still we still had our fans. You know what I mean? I think we had more. I think we had more fans outside of this area than anywhere because we were. You know, I mean, I don't know why, but we just did abroad. New North Jersey was like the the, the hot spot. And New York and Virginia and all places like that. Philadelphia could give a shit, but <laughs> and they still could give a shit because you know, with well oh. nowadays with my GBK, my, my I'm so, I'm a bad person apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, actually, the first time I, I heard first time I crucifier was from uh, Wes Weaver's radio show in yeah. Houston. Yeah, he so played. Uh, yeah, he played the Crown of Thorns demo. I'll, I'll never forget it. it was Mass Cremation of the Flock mm. was the song that he played because I think that's the song right. that starts off the tape. Yeah, I do, yeah. And I'm like, holy fuck, those vocals and the fuck. It was just like, it was just like, holy fuck. It was just so brutal, man. Um, yeah, cool, man. Because that was my first introduction to, to Crucify. I was, you know, I was still in high school. Whenever that, I think that what? demo came out, 90. I think it was it 92 that you heard it first when it first came out or oh yeah yeah oh good cool yeah it was brand it was brand new he was like yeah oh, this nice. is a, this is like a new a new new demo from 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 crucifier right uh and I'm like who the fuck is crucifier and I heard it, I was like holy fuck dude this is fucking brutal right. I mean there was a lot of things that I heard you know when I was 15 16 17 uh, on that radio show that a lot of the east coast stuff like that first incantation demo, I heard it when it came out. Fucking, you know, all that shit. Uh, Immolation, you name it. So it was all the good stuff. Man. How, so how, we had a. How old are you? I'm actually I just turned forty eight. Okay, a little bit younger. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when that demo came out, I was seventeen. The 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 uh, the Crown of Thorns demo. Mm -hmm. But it, by then, I mean I was I was a seventeen year old like fucking. As they call now an elitist, I was like, you know, I'm all about the underground and fuck yeah. everything else. Good. I wanted, yeah, I wanted everything to be fucking brutal and fucking evil and yeah. and all that shit, you know. So, um, Kaz, hold on. Yeah. Kaz gave me a dead bat at a show. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's that about? Well, I we we used to <laughs> we used to practice in our attic at my at my parents' house back in the day. And uh, there was a bat trapped in there once, and uh, we killed it. Well, we, we eventually got to kill the bat. So I used to, when, when the bat was dead, I made a chain and, like, put the wind, ward around my neck at a show that we played. So it was a dead bat around, like, a, a necklace. And after the show, I gave it to Spencer. So <laughs> I sure what he did with it. But, yeah, we were stupid back then. So. Um. All right. So let's let's kind of let's kind of get it. Let's start from – from now, I guess this is this the current crucifier lineup. That's yeah, that's us now. That's I think that's from last year. This photo, and this is the band because I have a well, you know what? Fuck, let me uh, well, I'll, pl I'll play it later, but yeah, so this is this is the lineup that recorded the Say Your Prayers and 
the uh, Disulfur album? Uh, um, Spencer wasn't in for that one. Uh, we had Dan Keaton back in the band for that. Oh, okay. And then Spencer joined right after that. That was done because uh, Dan Keaton re he resigned from playing, so we found Spencer was able to play. So then he joined us right after that album. Sweet. And you, you guys, this lineup is. I think you mentioned to me that you guys are going to start recording, or you're working on new stuff. We or? we are we are mid recording now. We're um we just finished bass guitar uh, two weekends ago. We have leads to do. Um, so I'm going to do some harmonies on guitar and then vocals. And then we're going to ship. Then we ship it out. to uh, Patrick at Iron Bonehead wants to have his guy do the editing and mixing. So um, we're going to ship that out as soon as that's finished. And then um, hopefully that'll be out at the end of the year, maybe, if we're lucky. Fuck yeah, dude. That, that's that. Uh, say I know you recorded like an old song, but that was one of my favorite, like, uh, I guess, recordings, releases of last year that and the uh the bloodstorm album that came out was fucking great right. uh so that's say your prayers ep i guess you call it an ep yeah, if you haven't if you haven't gotten that go fucking get it that shit that shit's fucking fucking rules thank you uh, um so you say you're doing harmonies you're you're playing guitar on the recording yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna do some guitars yeah have you always done that um no 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 not once in a while i would do yeah i would i would do some little things here some little leads or something back in the day and then i started to you know increase my you know guitar presence on some things right mostly harmonies and leads and little things like that and uh i'm going to do that again on this album so um now do you write like the the majority of the riffs i write i write about 75 percent, maybe oh, fuck. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Spencer, Spencer, Spencer does a nice honk, and then I get some some rest from the guys. So and then I, I usually I try to arrange a lot of it myself, and then we'll get in the, in the practice room, and then we'll all we'll all join in on arranging and stuff like that. So, fuck yeah, dude! That that uh that I know. I think for the for the last album, you had like you were putting out videos. I don't know if it's when you were tracking or, or what, but I I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know if you guys are are going to do anything like that, like kind of like little snippets of you guys recording this stuff. Cause I, I think it was that, uh, was that ego some Papa song? Oh yeah. 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 yeah, that was, yeah. I just that wanted was, to want to let everyone know that we're doing something. And I, and I was, uh, you know, proud of that, those, that song mostly. So one of the people to hear it. Right. Yeah. And I think it was, you were like singing it too. Maybe it was a rehearsal. Might have been a rehearsal. That. Yeah, but it was it was fucking. I was like, "Fucking hey, dude!" Because I remember I, the first time I got to see you guys wasn't until fuck when you guys played in Houston. What's it been like three years now? I don't even know. Oh yeah, it's been a few. Yeah, was it 2018? Yeah. I think. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, that was, was fun." Like, yeah, Houston was, was fun. Yeah. I was like, "Holy fuck, dude!" I remember just standing there like, uh, because drumming, and I, we had the discussion earlier about drumming and, and and vocalists and you know not, not not a lot of people do it because it's not an easy thing to do um uh, but i was like sitting there watching i was like holy fuck dude because a lot of people kind of kind of half-ass it on the drums when they're playing live and singing i think yeah. I, I but, have but you were like fuck you know you're like drum fills everywhere and yeah. Oh yeah, I love I love rolls, man. I love <laughs> I love I love I love a big kid. I like just moving all around. Yeah, I like I love that stuff, dude. Yeah, so uh, and I, I always oh, I, I always told everyone that uh well when I started singing it was like um I said hey I'm breathing out anyway might as well just try this out right so when we originally started Crucifier it was just me and two guitar players Ira Redden and Jeff Anderson and we had it tuned real low so we we're kind of really heavy but uh. Yeah, we didn't have a singer and a uh, we didn't have a bass player. So um, when we're playing, you say who's going to sing? I'm like, you know what? Let me try it. <laughs> you know. <what> I mean? <laughs> so, so you know, of course, Chris Reefer is one of my favorites, and um, oh yeah, Dan Beeler and all that stuff. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to try. I want to join this this elitist team, right? So <laughs> so we did it. It worked, and the rest is history, I guess. Right? Is this? Now this is an old photo. Is this? Is this? 
What when when what lineup is this? How far how long back was this? That's that's nineteen ninety three. Okay. That's that's Dan Camp on the right and uh Gary Gandy on base on the left there. Man. Yeah. That was that was a really good lineup. That was uh unparalleled well unparalleled majesty, yeah. Uh, maybe maybe right after that. By disgrace of God, probably. Oh, okay. But it was uh yeah, the, Gary wasn't on he was on he came in in ninety four, so that was probably maybe ninety three, ninety four, this photo. Wow. Yeah, where was it? Where was this at? That was that's just some old church in uh, around here. That's all. Yeah, I mean, because you know, there's there's fo photos that have have become kind of infamous over the years. I think this is probably that same lineup. This is kind of one of them too, with you and the cross. Yeah, that's 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 <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Yeah, that's old. That's uh, that's probably ninety two. Yeah, that, that's Crown of Thorns era, probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that that's one of those photos I used to see like in, like zines and shit. I think if I remember, but uh, yeah, that was that was uh, I had hair. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was that's a cool that's a cool shot, and then cool. this one too right here. Yeah, same same photo session I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah there was quite a few from that session. Right. So uh, Paul and I, Paul and I were talking about drummers, and you, you, uh, I kind of mentioned that on uh, earlier, but uh, he talked about we talked about a few drummers like uh, Mickey D. I don't know if he's if he's somebody you 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 dig his style. Always like uh, yeah. Um, was yeah? Oh, Kim Russ. I know you and I kind of sort of briefly talked about Kim Russ being like it's just. Underappreciated. Yeah, the top of the heap for me. Yeah, absolutely. Genius. So yeah. is that is that is that uh is it safe to say or who who are the drummers that kind of made you want to play? Oh, Lee Kerslake. Oh fuck yeah. Yeah, oh. I mean, my, yeah, my first yeah. my first my first uh, introduction to metal was Ozzy, and it was Blizzard of Oz, and I as as uh, you know, of course, I was what was I twelve years old when I got it, and uh, I played it nonstop, and that was that album was. The, the very start of what I wanted to to do, right? So yeah, and, and his drumming is just just incredible. So yeah, that got me started. That he got me started. Then after that, everyone else fell into, fell into place. You know, Bill Ward and, and Dave Lombard, all that stuff. Over time, you know, I started yeah. using you know using that in, inspiration from those guys too. So well, he, he well since you mentioned he mentioned Tommy Allrich, he said he loved he really loved Tommy Allrich. Yeah, Tommy too. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. Cause we talked about fills a lot and yeah. those, those are, and since you, you, you say you like putting fills and shit. So the drummers that you mentioned are fucking, you know, yeah, obviously, you know, curse Lake and, uh, Kim Russ and Kim Russ. Yeah. Tommy Aldridge. Yeah. All those guys. Yeah. Dave Lombardo was a, was a drum fill guy. Yeah. He was, yeah. He was a very big influence on me. Yeah. And Mike Suss was too. Possessed was yeah. one of my favorites of all time. Chris Reeford, of course. Dude, he mentioned, he mentioned, he mentioned, I think he mentioned, uh, I think he mentioned those two guys too. It's fucking weird. You guys are kind of mentioned, mentioned well, we in the same the, people. Yeah, we cover the same school of, of, of yeah. Learning, I think, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's same, sort of the same style. I mean, similar. Yeah. Yep. So let, let's, let's, uh, all right, let me find this. So for you, I guess, with Crucifier, it started here, right? Yeah. Any that, any any memories of, of recording this and yeah, it was fun. Yeah, we, we recorded at the same place that Gorphobia did um I think their demo. Like a lot of guys did their demo at that snug fit place, and that's where we did this, I think. Yeah. That was fun. Philadelphia or uh Ben Salem, wherever it was. Uh yeah, that was fun. Those were the days. <laughs> and you still play some of these some of these songs on this live, right? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, Demons of Filth one one of my favorites. So I'll play, we'll play that anytime. Um, <laughs> you know, the other stuff, I mean, not so much. I mean, it's you know, I like playing the newer stuff, but um, yeah, that's those, those are great times when you when you could do artwork like that and you made your own tape, uh, you know, covers and J cards and stuff. Yeah, it's fucking yeah, great. yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. So this was. Uh, do you? Uh, so were you? Were you the 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 kind of the male the 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 guy that corresponded with 
yeah. with other people in the band for the band. Right. Yeah, that was that was sort of my baby. I think Crucify was you know, sort of. I I co-founded that with those two other guys I mentioned, Ira and Jeff, and uh, after they left, you know, I just I continued it. So it was you know basically my baby. So um, yeah, I did all the correspondence and stuff like that. Back do you remember? Do you remember? I know it's been thirty something years, but. Do you remember like who were who were some of the first people that like ordered this from you like through the mail or anything like that? No, I, I wouldn't remember. <laughs> I wouldn't remember. I used to save all my mail back in the day. Then I yeah I, yeah. As soon as I got when we started when we moved, I, I got rid of it all. But I, I did have a lot of things saved. We tape we I tape traded with a million people, which was 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 great. And uh, considering you didn't have internet and stuff like that, the, the amount of people that you talk to and shared your stuff with was is, is insane dude i think yeah. i'm sure i shared this with the fucking impaled nazarene guys and fucking the crematory guys and fucking even the okay. immortal dudes dude it's just amazing what, what what went on back then but uh yeah they were they were great times dude yeah i mean i was i was that i was that young kid like you know that was into the bands i wasn't really playing anything at the time but yeah it was you know, it was right. it, it was it was wild because it was still new. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, yeah. It was so yeah, early nineties were were incredible. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Jim Stanick. Did you, did you, uh, did you ever deal with Jim Stanick? I I may have. Yeah. Good <laughs> Jim. Trading was yeah. Trading was a fucking awesome dude. Yeah. What's up, Jim? Pretty, Jim Stanick. Fucking Jim. Nice. Yeah, he's a <laughs> he's a New Jersey fucking yeah legend. Yeah, one of those New Jersey maniacs, dude. <laughs> the uh, hold on, I had, I had something. Oh, I just want to show everybody. If you haven't gotten this, you don't get it. Do you still have copies of this? I I I, I do have some. Yeah, I've seen. Right. I think I have vinyl of it. I think some vinyl okay. Left, yeah. Yeah. So, dude. Dude, hit me up. I'll I'll yeah, sell to you cheap. It's no big deal. Yeah, get get a copy of this on vinyl for you vinyl dorks out there. Yeah, hell get yeah. This, get this on vinyl from straight straight from Kaz himself. So hell yeah. Uh, I I uh I don't do li dumb like top ten or whatever list, but this album or this EP was one of my favorite things that came out last year. Like oh, I said, wow. so I've That's mentioned awesome. it. Like yeah, I mean I've mentioned it plenty of times on the show about how, and I played that fucking. Uh, what is that fucking song? I can't even remember the name of the song. I, I, I come li come on live and I fucking forget, like, oh, yeah, I'm, everything yeah. I've ever known, you know? I'm the same way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, get it, Aaron. Get it directly from from uh, from Kaz. Get the vinyl. Yeah, I'll, yeah, hook it up. Just, can you put my email up or something? Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could do that. Uh, yeah, that so while, 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 I, while I put that up, Talk, can you talk about because your cover arts have always to me they've always been cool they've always stood out uh what what uh i guess what kind of influence the kind of album artwork that or demo artwork that you've used over the years i don't know i mean i mean when 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 i was young we we would go to the mall or whatever to get our records that was that was the only way you knew who was good by the cover art right so you would you flip through your Venom albums? You're like, what the hell? This is so good. And you you know you see Hello Waits and me like, that alone right there. Hello Waits. Yeah. It's kind of for me the pinnacle of of artwork and and of everything. So you see that kind of stuff, and then you know you want to put that kind of that kind of emotion and heart into your fucking artwork that you're doing, right? So that's sort of how I I, I envision it too. So you want something that just stands out and 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 kind of sells your fucking music or your your emotion or whatever you're playing you know what i mean so this to me and then you know in retrospect some people say oh this was used on this and that and the other thing so it doesn't matter because this fits us perfectly this this kind of art right here this i demon, agree it, it, yeah it, you know it, this demon motherfucker telling dude what's up yeah that's us man <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah that's how i that's how i pick art for the most part right so is is it the, the true crucifier email? Uh yeah, at live.com. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right, yeah. That's that's the main one for now. But... All right, I'll put that the true crucifier 
Five.com. All right, so shit. All right, here we go. All right, so if you want to get and Hearst, I think you still have some of the Hearst stuff too, right? Yeah. I put Hearst in there. Yeah. So we'll get in. We'll, so, yeah. Oh yeah. We'll get into Hearst here in a minute, but uh, yeah. so if you want any t any if you want the crucifier Hearst material, whatever, you probably still have some GBK stuff lying around too, maybe. I I have I have some yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, let me yeah, fucking get, get all. Let me fuck. Yeah, get it all. Get it all. Get it, get all. it all from Kaz, man. Let's uh. <laughs> let everything. me uh. Let me add. Let me add GBK on here. There you go. GBK you merch go. from for Kaz. You get direct from from the fucking source. Yeah, I got uh, I got a lot of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, do cool. do uh, yeah. be cool and 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 order some shit right now while you're watching this. If you're watching it live, go go take a couple of seconds, send out an email, and and get that shit from them. And then uh, if you're watching in a replay, do the same thing. Push pause. Go fucking eat. Send Kaz an email. And say I want this shit. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Come on. So. It's not doing any good in my closet, man. You, you exactly. Give it to the fans, you know what I mean? And it's good shit. It's not just shit. Yeah, it's not. I, you I know, think so. it's good. <laughs> a lot of us think it's pretty oh, good. Oh, Roy, Roy, Roy Fox sent me this. This I, I remember seeing this like a lot of places, but I'm glad he sent it to me. I always, this was always a cool fucking ad, man. I, yeah, that's that's my own. I did that um, Yeah. years ago. Yeah. It's got the old phone number on there, my old address. Yeah. Yeah, don't call that shit. Yeah, don't call okay. that. You, are, you <laughs> wouldn't get through anyway. And don't, go to that, and don't go to that house because I ain't there no more. But uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, this uh, yeah, we back like like I said before, back in the day, that's how you did it. You did your own little flyers. You fucking you know promoted your own stuff through stuff like this. You threw it at the uh, put it in the um record stores. Yeah, cast them out at the shows. That's what we did with this kind of stuff. So put them in the uh, put them in put them in uh, orders like. Yeah. Or your trades. Hey, can you pass yeah. these flyers out for me? Because I used to do the same thing. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I remember. Uh, I remember when I first got like something from, like outside of the U.S. It was Australia. I'm like, holy fuck! So much this reached Australia. It's like the it's like yeah. the coolest fucking thing, you know? Oh yeah, it's 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 very it's so much adrenaline when you see that your stuff is <laughs> your stuff is in Australia and Japan. Yeah. And all that. You're like, dude, what the fuck, man? <laughs> great. Yeah, it's really good. So uh, I had well. Let me let me put the, the actual the whole entire logo. I think I have it in here. So, so I've always thought it was Crucifier logo is one of the coolest fucking logos there is. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's pretty busy. Well, yeah, it went from being just sort of like a, a pencil drawing, of, you know, to this. I kind of uh, it evolved to this over the over the years. Yeah. You Did know. you do it? Yeah, that's mine. Yeah, yeah, because I know, I know, uh, I know you dabble. Yeah, uh, I just screw around with art once in a while. Yeah, I used to. Well, I did art in school, but uh, this is what I love the most doing doing the metal stuff. Is my favorite. You know. Yeah, mainly, this, mainly logos and things like that. Yeah. yeah, it's a great fucking. It's just, it's just a catchy like. Just I don't know. It just pops to me. I always thought it was, it was fucking cool. Like you said, there's so much going on that. I kind of like those things where you, you kind of notice something next time you look at it, you know, something yeah. new. I mean, well, this this was the this is a very busy version of it. I think I toned it down a little bit in Photoshop. <laughs> later on. I mean, it just had so many fucking squiggles on it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Well, you've seen those shit nowadays. Nowadays, you can't even read yeah, what a logo those, says. Logos are out of control now. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, so you guys, let, 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 me, let me play a clip. This only, not the only one, but I found a, I was trying to find something of a recent show that you guys did. I think this is in LA. Uh, so we'll play a little bit. And I think it's you guys doing sh doing the, the GBK song, if I remember correctly. Really? Uh, so let's, yeah. we'll, we'll watch a little, we'll, we'll watch the whole thing, just a little bit of it. So yeah, here's, just... uh, here's Crucifier Live and... I think October of last year. Check it out. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so there we go. So that was all right. That was Los Angeles. Yeah, that was, was some some, some fest. I think you played. Yeah, East Stella. I thought we were going to get shot that night. <laughs> uh, no, it was it was a cool show. Yeah, it was it was they they the venue changed uh, like the night before. It was like uh, yeah, you know, Antifa wanted to come in and start some trouble, but uh. No, it was actually a good night. I was I was surprised how good it went afterwards, but uh, yeah, it was it was a fun show. We had yeah. fun. Do you, do you have any? Uh, you guys have any shows lined up? I haven't uh, seen anything. No, nah, we've been concentrating on recording right now, but um, yeah, we're we're thinking we we should start playing out again. I mean, it's time. But um, okay, dude. Yeah, but I'm. I'm uh, kind of need to get Carlos to bring you guys back to fucking. Yeah, Houston. yeah, I think uh, there was. Yeah, that'd be great to come back to Texas. Yeah, it was fun. We had a good time. Did you guys play El Paso? We did. Yeah. No, no, we didn't. We we won. We were going to, but I think they squashed the show for some reason. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it was the dead ascension, I think, or whatever. Sucks yeah. for them anyway. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'd like to play Houston. It's gonna be fun. Fuck yeah, dude! That'd be that'd be fucking awesome. Yeah. So, again, I don't want to make this a fucking. A infomercial, but go buy some shit from Cass. Yeah, why not? Yeah. I mean, what are you? What else are you gonna do with your money? Yeah, really. Come on, what the fuck? Uh, let me see. I, I keep. I miss. I miss some of these comments. What do you got? Uh, somebody what? said something about. Oh, Crucifier was one of the first bands I tape traded with in the early '90s. Didn't get to meet you until early 2000s when GB played. GB Key played. GBK yeah. played a club and show it. Oh yeah, Kevin. Huh? Mm-hmm. Kevin. Kevin, yeah. Yeah, he's uh yeah. we go we go way back, yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. <laughs> Being crucified and not going with the inverted cross theme is golden. <laughs> there you go. So would love uh to book crucifier sometime in Cleveland. What the fuck? There you go. Down with that. There you go. There we go. Yep. That's we're picking up one show. Nice. <laughs> well, somebody in Houston said they wanted you to play here too. So yeah, we'll we'll do it. Hell yeah. Uh Aaron from Go Throne Records earlier mentioned he said hit him up for for a show or something. Okay. In, in okay. Houston. I'll, I'll put if I mean I think it was him that said that, but I'll I'll get with him and if he I was mean, serious. Yeah, just email me there and then we'll go from there. I mean, whatever. Yeah, there you go. The email's right there. The true crucifier at live.com. So, yep. speaking of, uh, since that was a GBK, so, so Crucifier, I guess, I can, I'm trying to remember, was Crucifier still going in 95? Crucifier, yeah, Crucifier never stopped. It, it always, and in, in my, even if we took a break, we still were live, we we're still active, you know? Yeah. But maybe I took a break here and there to do, gbk stuff but we we still were active there might have been a year in there where i you know took a break break but um you know in my in my in my eyes it was still doing it you know so yeah i've always been doing crucifier in some respect you know so i don't know if i don't know if you've, you probably had to answer this years back but how did how did you entering gbk come about um, well, I mean, we, we used to, we used to tape trade with the Argus Link guys, Alex and, and, and them back in the day. And we kind of were all, we were friends with, um, Vlad of GBK first, right? Yeah. So he, he, he came up a couple practices up our house and, uh, we would hang out, right. And, um, just do what we had to do. And then, uh, well, as soon as he got booted, <laughs> so, uh, I guess Alex got, got in contact, um, with John of Doomstone. Yeah, and because I talked to John, we he and I tape traded years ago. So um, he knew Alex before I did. So um, he introduced me to him, and we kind of hung out one night. And he told me what he wanted to do. He said, "You know, I'm looking for you know somebody to play drums and sing on on stuff he's doing." And I was 95 ish, late 95, I think. And uh, I was totally into it because that first GBK demo is, is is incredible. So I said, "I'd love to be part of that." So the rest is history with that too. So. Yeah, that uh, that and I, I've told you. I think I've told you before. I mean, I know the guy gets a lot of shit or whatever, but but man, the fucking vocals on that first GBK demo are just 
unreal, man. Yeah. No, I I totally agree. I yeah. just I said that a million times. That guy's drumming is, is and his um and and his vocals were was stellar. That first demo was just insane, and it was unique at the time. No one else else in the U.S. was doing that. So no. that was that was in, you know that was his claim to fame too. Yeah, and I will, I'll stick by. Yeah, he's a, he's a good drummer, and he and he can sing. So I mean, he might be wacky, but other than that. <laughs> he put it fine, but he fucking put it together on that fucking on that demo. That's all I know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. This the second one, not so much. I really didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, yeah, well, yeah. You know, once yeah, you know, that demo was the first demo was top. So you know, how could you, you know, how could you match that fucking yeah energy? So right? this this was the first thing you recorded with GBK, the Witness EP, right? I think so. Yeah. Think yeah, because was... this came out before the uh, the first album. Did it? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. Wanna, I don't want to sound like a complete fucking nerd or anything like that. But yeah, it's. Uh, I'm glad someone is. This came I out. This, this. this was 96, 95, 96. Early, yeah, 96. Yeah, and it had, the, well, there was like a tape version and then like a seven inch version, which yeah. Yeah. this is. I think the seven inch version had the uh the, had two songs it had a uh uh you guys redid uh a song from the first demo and what's that song the tears uh that wet something mm. i can't remember but yeah but that was that was the uh and 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 you, you and i have, have talked before about the recording process for GBK when you were in the band, and it was you guys used a four track, right? I think on this one we did, yeah, yeah. I think I was a four track, maybe an eight track, maybe a Tascam eight track for this for this witness. I remember that. For yeah. mocking, mocking was um, was a little different. Now on this on this release, where where, where did you guys record it at? At like we, at your place? Yeah, in the in my parents' attic. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why had that sound? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I mean, if, it wouldn't have sounded the way it sounds if if it was recorded somewhere else, right? Yeah, no, that's that's the sound you got back then. I mean, Fuck yeah, you're playing that style of music. That's what you that's what you wanted. So, and we got yeah. it actually, so it was good. Yeah. So, have you listened to any of this stuff? Like, do you still listen to any of this old stuff that you recorded? Mm, yeah, yeah, I'll listen to it once in a while. Yeah. And it's still. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about it? The thirty, so almost thirty years later. I, I I don't listen. I don't really listen for what I do. I listen to music that Alex did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I, I kind of I'm really critical of myself, so I don't like to listen to myself. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah. No, his his writing is incredible. So I I love everything he does. He he, he can do no wrong. So. So yeah, I'll listen to this stuff and I'll be like, "Wow, we were pretty good back then." So. <laughs> and this is the uh, hold on, where's that fucking photo? This is has those pretty infamous photos now, I guess. The back cover of the EP. Yeah. Was this at that same place the, from the the your photo from the Crucifier photos? No. No. no? <laughs> These are all separate. My, mine was done at a cemetery around here, and the. Um, yeah. The, if you see the um, statue has a, its head off, yeah, I, I didn't do that. That was like that. I was, it was like, I don't know. I was like, well, look at this, and I didn't do it. Hopefully, the cops don't come, but they didn't, and that was a perfect. <laughs> show. I love that. And well, uh, yeah. I think their their photos were done separately. They're, Alex did that in some abandoned. Uh, I forget what it was. I can't remember. But uh, and I don't know where the Marauder did his, but. Uh, Cool man, Old yeah, school. dude. I Love just, shit. Wouldn't have, I, yeah. wouldn't have, yeah, yeah. I just, just take, taking you back to a time you probably haven't mm. talked to, thought about in a while, you know. Jesus, dude, yeah, <laughs> good stuff, man. I, I'm glad people liked it and still oh, do it. It's fucking awesome, dude. It's a really, yeah, mm. the uh, so the, the, the album, the mocking, <laughs> mocking the philanthropist album was. Wait, was this this photo here? Let me show this. Was this during a uh, Crucifier rehearsal or GBK? Do you remember? That's probably Crucifier. 
You still have that it, road, it, Tom? It, it could be either. It could be either. I was in the attic. Um, I could be. I had hair, so it could have been. No, you know what? If I had hair, <laughs> then, yeah, it, it could have been either. It could have been. Either. I don't. I forget. I don't know what year that was. So. Um. Now, now the Roto Times. What uh was it? I'm gonna say maybe creator or something like that. Maybe influenced the Roto Toms or what? What yeah. made you want to play Roto Toms? I don't know. I mean, it could have been. It could have been anything. I mean, just virtual fate. Fate probably uh, possessed whatever, but uh, I I probably only used them because someone gave them to me. You know what I mean? So if I if I because I could never afford it, so I probably wouldn't have bought them myself. So, and it made your set look cooler. Yeah, it did absolutely. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind having a set again, just to you know, just add to the kit. It'd be fun to do that. So, what shit. do you play nowadays? I'd say that that same drum set's right there. What what, what is it? It's a Mapex. It's a Mapex Saturn series. Uh, I think it's a, what is it? A two, four, six, eight, nine piece. It's a nine piece kit. Holy shit. Yeah, I, I bought that in 89. Still use it to this day <laughs> because I'm a cheapskate. So I I won't spend I won't spend any money on shit. So I just dust it off and that's, you know, still playing. Damn. Yeah, that's cool. I, I actually, I know quite a few people that still have like their set from way back when so that's, that's cool. a, a lot of guys had great sets back in the day I and mean, you're, you're like hey where is that Do you still have that i'd like to buy it off you you know <laughs> they never did. well well one thing one thing over the years drum sets used to be big and then some somewhere in the, like the mid 90s drum sets like became like four pieces or three became, again yeah, you know became small yeah 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 and yeah we'll have, we have lars to blame for that probably <laughs> So uh, obviously you're a fan of the of the big kits because I love it. Yeah, I love a big drum set. I, I'm not I'm not good with a small drum set because I'm not really a good drummer. So if I have a lot more things to hit, I can I can you know wheel and deal. Oh, come on, don't dude, don't be don't be so fucking hum humble, dude. <laughs> dude, not be humble. You're fucking no nah, fuck no. <laughs> I, I've uh, seen you play. I've heard you play. You you have. Just like I told Paul, Paul has his own style. You have your own style, and that's that's I'll, not an easy thing to do. I'll give you this: I'm no Matt Hefner, so you know. <laughs> what did you hear that? that did you hear? Did that you part, hear him? I haven't. What recently? No, fucking Paul. We were talking about drummers, and he brought up Matt too. No, no, no. I, I, that wasn't. No, I wasn't listening. But Matt's fucking great, dude. He's such dude, a good drummer. Matt, Matt's gonna be like fucking shit in his pants whenever he. I tell him Paul and fucking Kaz both mention you, dude. Oh yeah, no, he's fucking great. Yeah, he's cool. You know, you know, don't don't tell him we said anything. Let's no, uh, yeah, no, no. He he should be watching that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he's, he's really good. He, he's probably at that fest going on in Houston right now. Oh, uh, okay. Tom Warriors cover band's playing tonight, so. Oh, uh, which one? Uh, Triumph of Death. Triumph of Death, yeah. Got like a bunch of chicks in the band, don't he? I think so. So, but no, I didn't make it. I didn't. Somebody met you. You're not there. Fuck no, I'm not there. <laughs> no, we're doing important things right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. I, yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't, I don't, you know, whatever. But um, so this was. Uh, let's go get back to GBK briefly. This was the first album, and even, I mean, for some reason, the band. It seems like, because I remember when the stuff was coming out, and I mean, yeah, it, the whole fucking, I don't know, around this time, a lot, a lot of bands just got really fucking wimpy and just like crap. And but you guys, you guys were still fucking raw and and and, and creating like good shit, good evil shit, and but. It seemed, and maybe, maybe maybe I'm wrong, but it just didn't seem to get that the circulation uh, around the underground as as much as I thought it should have. I don't know. I don't know if that's the case, but that's just that's just from my viewpoint. I don't know how you feel about that. I don't know. I think uh, GBK always had its own little following, so it's like, I mean, back then it had its own people liked it, but it wasn't like it is now. You got you got a lot of GBK fans now that weren't oh, yeah. around back then, right? So yeah, I don't know. I mean, a, a lot of people tell me it's their favorite album. I mean, Judea Beast is my favorite personally, but um, 
my old lady likes this one. A lot of people do. I mean, well, dude, the, the opening song "Foul Parody" is like yeah. that's like a classic, like yeah. a classic to me. Yeah, Jalal, yeah. Jalal writes the best stuff, dude. It's just unbelievable. Dude, the end. I mean, the whole song kicks ass, but the ending, that fucking ending riff, is like yeah. Dude, when, and out, yeah. when you hit those fucking tags, dude, on the kick, I'm like, it just makes you want to fucking just, oh, yeah. man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good, man, great stuff, dude. I, I, it's, it's, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of that, that history, man. So it's, it's incredible. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, anybody that follows you on social media knows that, you know, you're, you, uh, you don't shy away from shit like, like a lot of people do of their old bands or whatever, you know. I mean, yeah, I mean. I, yeah, I love I love everything I've done. I mean, you know, you, you should. I mean, even if even if it was a failure, you're like, hey, at least I fucking that's what I was doing. You know, you, yeah. put, your, you put your heart and soul into it, dude. It's just got to be good eventually, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you would you would fucking do it or put it out if you didn't if you didn't fucking like it. Right, right. Yeah. Now here's a here's a fucking evil fucking photo of you guys. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, that's one of my favorite photos. Where's this? Where's this at? This was this was in the attic, probably. We had those. I had those Mary statues I got from a dude from uh, Entrapment uh, around the Philadelphia area. He was an artist. He was, I think, he was the singer of the band, and he had those Mary statues, right? And they were black with the red blood, right? He was an artist, so he he hooked those up and gave them to me. Nice. And, uh, yeah, they were fucking sick. I should have fucking kept those. I don't know why the fuck I got rid of them. <laughs> Yeah, that was yeah, that had to have been ninety six, this picture. Ninety six, yeah. ninety seven, maybe. Probably ninety six. Yeah, yeah, I like this picture. Yeah, it's a it's a says it all pretty much. Yeah, it's it's fucking it's a classic, classic shot of of, of the band at that time. Um and you, you actually you guys how many how many live shows did you play with the band? You guys play out a lot. I don't remember a lot of shows. We did. We did a yeah. We did a few. We did a handful. I, I don't know. Maybe ten or twelve. Well, I'm just guessing. I I can't recall. But there, I do have I do have us playing shows on on uh, on file here on the computer. But uh, yeah, I don't know how many exactly. Well, that was that that one that just popped up recently, from like '98 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that rehearsal or not a rehearsal was I think it was a house party. I, I, oh, I, was it? Yeah, I think it was in Virginia. I believe. Yeah. Yeah, because there isn't too much footage out there. Yeah. Uh, the CBGB show was fucking is great, dude. That was that. That sounds really good. Yes, that's it one does. of the best sounding, you know, live things I've ever done. But um, it, yeah, we played with I think Mayhem was on that show and um, yeah, some other bands. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking mayhem. Yeah. Fucking mayhem. All right. Well, here's a this this photo kind of made me laugh because it has relapse on the back, and uh, yeah. you guys were you guys you know you know that was fucking, uh, that was uh, one of those Milwaukee metal fests I think. Yeah, well, it was one of those festivals. Yeah, you know Milwaukee. I think was that ninety eight. I might have been uh, 99, 98. I forget. Well, there's a second guitar player there. That's uh, yeah, that's the Marauder. Yeah. You know, he might have, yeah, he might have played with us that night, and probably John Shamit from um, Doomstone was probably, yeah. Well, he was in the lineup at that time. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 night, the the drum set, the right the right drum pedal was their stuff, and it yeah. broke. It broke. So I played that whole set with my left foot. <laughs> oh fuck! Are you yeah. serious? It, it wouldn't work. It just went boom. It died. And I'm like, and we were already we already started. So I was like, I guess I'm playing this bitch with my left foot, and that's what I did. <laughs> I'm like fuck, man. So uh, I, I guess I did all right. No one said anything, but <laughs> so that's, yeah. that's one memory from that fucking thing. Uh, let me. See. People are asking. Hey, uh, re repost your questions. I've been kind of missing a lot of the questions that are coming through. So. Uh, if you have any questions that I may have missed that you really, really want Cass to answer it, um, post them in, in the chat. Uh, so let's, uh, is now is this, uh, is this, is this band still going or is it, is it uh, done? Yeah, we're Pete ended that band, um, right, right before the last record got released. 
Oh shit. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we were we were going to do a live. We were going to do something live, and then he he, he squashed the band. So uh, then then the newest album of that of Abominate came out. But that was we played a festival with this lineup. It's Pete, me, and Spencer. Yeah, that yeah that was uh that uh the first album you did with them uh, was was it the uh Bross, the one with Bross the Plague? Something. Yeah, that one, the three P's or whatever. That, that fucking yeah, that one fucking rules. Oh, it was fun, uh, man. Working with Pete was great, dude. Pete's and Pete's insane, dude. He's so good. Yeah, I mean, he's. I, I always thought that before I started playing with him i was like um i always thought it was just the voice the voice of you know the, that voice is all you need to know well, when you see him play bass dude this fucking guy is good dude. yeah really really good so i was i was very very blessed to be you know playing with him so that was a fun time too fuck yeah 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 i i i, I dug the uh abomine abomine how do you pronounce it abomine 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 Abomine, yeah, I had it right. Yeah. Uh, all right, so oh, any any King Fowley stories? Uh, you I, you and I, King? Well, we yeah, I would see King back in back in the early nineties once in a while. I remember we I think we played a show with them once, and uh, down at G Willikers in Pennsylvania, New Jersey. I want to say ninety three, maybe, and uh, he needed a bar of snare, and I'm like. Uh, I said, yeah, you can wear my snare. She don't. And I <laughs> I knew he hit. He was a hard hitter, right? So I was like, yeah, try not to break the head on me. He said, oh, no, don't, worry, don't worry about it. It's cool. So uh, after he was done his set, I got the I got the, the drum, the, the snare back. And it wasn't broken, but it was. <laughs> there were so many giant divots in it. <laughs> this motherfucking guy put. He put some lag tights on that bitch, dude. Like, Fuck. Yeah, he put it. He put, it was great. But I saw it. I was like, God damn, it's like a cartoon. It was so fucking funny. So that motherfucker can pound the drums, dude. He, I, I, I hit yeah. light. I, I don't really hit hard. I hit light, but uh, this guy pounded the fucking shit out. He's <laughs> one of my favorites back in the day. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, um, I'm sure there's others, but I can't remember. I'm guess I'm guessing uh, this person is talking about the new GBK album. Your opinion uh, on it? Yeah, I, I, I like it. It's pretty good. There um, you go. Kosher Rats. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't a big fan of Kosher Rat. But uh, no, it's good, but it's not, you know, it's not his best writing, in my opinion. But uh, the new one's good. I think it's a little better than Kosher Rat. And, uh, and you can't mistake the Jalal fucking riffs are still there. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's got the, it's got the emotion. I like it. It's all good stuff. There you go. Like I said, anything Jalal does is gold, man, in my opinion. So, yeah. And you probably get this a thousand times. But uh, how come how come you weren't involved? Um, well, I, I back in the day I had personal problems, and I I, I left the band in two thousand and three. So okay, um, yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot deeper than that, but um, I'm not going to go into that now because it's it's, yeah, a, no. it's a long, long story. And it's, no, no, no. I I was considering writing a, writing a book about my my you know music stuff, but um, if I do, it'll be in there. But um, yeah, it's. it's and it's a pain in the ass to talk about, but uh, <laughs> I, it's, it's it's something I, in, in retrospect, I regret. I wish I wish I kept going, but uh, you know, you live and learn. Things things change, but uh, whatever, it still worked out. So yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, we, well, I guess I'll ask you about the Hearst album came out last year, right? Was it last year? Yeah, I think so. Has it been last year already? Because I remember, I, I, you know, what I I don't I don't remember anymore, but uh. <laughs> no, well, well, didn't um, didn't COVID fuck everything up? Well, I remember, I remember when you were like writing it, because I, I remember, I think you sent me like a little snippet of like a a lead or something like that. I was like, holy fuck, dude! Yeah. yeah, yeah, I was like, dude, this shit rules. And and it did take a while, I think, after that for it to come out, but eventually yeah. it came out. Yeah, is that uh, is that something you're still going to keep going? Yeah, keep doing. In fact. In fact, they, they, Jalal wants us to, well, he's involved in it, um, in, in the band and writing and stuff like that, and he's releasing it. So his, yeah. his label, SinistraryRecords.com, is, well, that's his site, but uh, Sinistraryrecords is releasing it. He wants it done. He wants it 
written, recorded, and released this year. So I gotta oh, get shit. I gotta get hustling. So, but uh, <laughs> we, we we have some riffs, but yeah, um, yeah, it's gonna take a little while. But, uh, yeah, it's I'm under the gun. But uh, now uh, we were we were planning on doing some more. But um, yeah, definitely some new music coming right now. So, Fuck yeah. Yeah. Were you, were you uh what were you pleased with the way the album came out? Yeah, yes, I love it. Yeah, it's really good. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember I remember you when you were first like beginning to write it, I'm like, dude, this shit shit's gonna fucking rule. And yeah. uh, I remember I got the C D from you, I was like, hell yeah. yeah. So I, I, I uh it. that hearse is good, yeah, I like it. Yeah, also so again, as it says on that fucking ticker, get your crucifier hearse. Even TBK stuff directly from Cass. Send them an email at, yeah. at the true crucifier live.com or the true crucifier live.com and uh, buy that shit. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Come on. What's your favorite song to play live? Shit. Uh, well, Falcon. you mentioned you mentioned Fal- uh, Demons of Filth earlier. Demons of Filth is, is one of my faves. I think Foul Deeds Will Rise of Crucifier song is, yes, yeah, one of my faves. Yeah, I love playing that. Fuck, dude. Uh, Plunging Pitchforks to Paradise is one of my favorites. Shit. Um, yeah, I like them. I like them all, dude. I like playing everything. Anything, <laughs> anything that's fast. And now my old age is like, if it doesn't have double bass, I'm a little bit happier. But you know, <laughs> you know I like the fast. I like the fast stuff. The, yeah. The, Fuck yeah. Know, Demons of Filth. Fucking. Uh, uh, what's that? Thine enemies destroyed is one of my favorites, dude. Yeah, so yeah, there's a lot of songs I like to play. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah there was, uh, well, you guys, uh, and I played that snippet of the GBK song. Uh, and I, I think you told me you guys aren't going to be doing that that one. Probably if you play live, probably not doing it anymore. So if you yeah. got to see them play that, then they then you consider yourself lucky. Yeah, I, wanna, I wanted to do some other ones if we play live again. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I even consider Foul Parody it would be one of them. Oh fuck! Yeah, something like that. Maybe um, uh, what's one of the other ones? Uh, Shitagog or whatever. Something like off of that album too. I don't know. I like to just change it up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And um, the um, but yeah, I mentioned it, the 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 live show here in Houston. Uh, I guess it's fuck twenty eighteen. That's fuck. That was a long time ago, dude. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that was fun, man. It was a good show. A lot of the place was packed too, man. It was really good. I had a good time. Wait, what the fuck is this? Hold on. Are you familiar with the band Goat Penis? I saw a shirt with the artwork for one of the band's compilation in the first picture I showed. Huh? What was the picture? Was there one? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I know Goat Penis, yeah. We might have traded with them back in the day. Yeah. Where's that fucking? Uh, let me let me go back and look. I don't think there was a Go Penis shirt. I think he said it's a compilation that they use some artwork. Oh, okay. It may have been similar. I don't yeah, know. That, yeah, that might be true. Yeah, well, you know, the artwork's been used over and over again. I mean, yeah. What can you do? Lamb of God slain will be. Fuck yeah. Fuck, yeah, that's yeah, that's uh, yeah. Spencer's reminded me that yeah, we wanted to play that song live too. Yeah, Name of God, Celine will be. Yeah, that's a great song too. Judeo Beast is such a good album, dude. Jesus Christ. So, even yeah, I, yeah. even if I wasn't on it, it'd be a fucking good album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the crucifier. Hello, do I, I think I had something else on here. <laughs> I think I, I think I showed all the photos already. So the the uh, crucifier working on a new album, working on new hearse, mm-hmm. uh, Obamane's kind of done. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, what? Okay, I get I get distracted. I, I have to do like twenty things at one time here. So. Yeah, it seems like, <laughs> seems like a pain in the ass actually. <laughs> it, it, it can be. And then people are like, hey, I, you didn't answer, you didn't ask him my question. Oh fuck, I'm trying to do 30 things at a time. <laughs> Chill out. That's why I said repost them. What's up, Andy Jones? You remember Flim, right? Kaz? Oh yeah, Flim, yeah. That's yes. uh Andy yeah. Jones, the uh the old drummer of Flim. Oh, cool, cool. 
Yeah, Flem yeah. was yeah, Flem was great. Yeah, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, they were. Yeah. Um uh, they still playing or they they done or what? No, I think they're done. I tried I had them on. I, th- I had Tom, Andy, and uh and uh Fred on at one time and we were trying to get them to, to do a show, but right. It, it never happened. We yeah, we, all- I probably I probably seen them back in the day. They had to have played somewhere that I saw. Yeah, I remember those fucking guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. guys, man. All those dudes are fucking cool dudes. Yeah. So, so you guys played uh, G Willikers a lot. Mm, yeah. What a uh, what a uh, oh, somebody mentioned somebody told me earlier or reminded me earlier about when you when you sang a I think you sang a song or two on, a, on an incantation show. Yeah. Was that was that the show where Craig did show up or something like that or? Oh, and they had a bunch of people fill in. No, this this was um, this was at Bonnie's Rocks in uh, Jersey, Echo, New Jersey. Uh huh. Where previously, the the couple weeks prior to that show, um, Craig had a throat infection; he couldn't sing. Right, so he asked me to sing the set for them. Oh shit! So so I went down for some rehearsals, and you know, with with you know all the guys and um practice with them and all that stuff i was going to do the whole sh- the whole show at this bonnie's rocks place but by the time the show came came up he was he was all healed so he was good to sing right so uh-huh. so he so he let me he, he, he allowed me to come up and do a couple songs because you know i put in the, the you know put in the work to yeah. you know, to learn the songs and all that shit so so it was fun man i still did two two cool tracks and then yeah it was tore it up it was fun yeah yeah, it's, it's online somewhere, I'm sure. Well, that footage was on YouTube for a while, but I, I can't find it anymore. Yeah, you can't find it. I, uh-huh. I have a copy of it. I'll I'll send it over or, or, or post it or something. If you yeah, want. dude, that that was yeah, it was fun, man. That was a good time. Sick footage, man. Yeah, it was. Uh, any memories of Masada? That hideous rod album, Smokes. Oh, cool, man. Thank you, uh, Masada. Yeah, like yeah, we we had fun doing that. It's sort of like a I don't know. Have you heard the Masada stuff we did? I don't think I've heard that. You know, I'll, I'll have to send you a copy of it, but uh, it's sort of a old pestilence sounding thing. I mean, it's, hmm. it's a little different, but it's uh, it's death metal. I mean, you know, just standard stuff. But uh, no, no, yeah, we uh, we had fun. I think Craig Smolaski played drums on one one of those albums we did. Oh shit! Yeah, so it was uh, a <laughs> yeah, we had yeah, we had a good time. I I think I did drums and vocals on one of them. I think there was two releases. I can't remember, but uh, yeah. And then Craig did drums on one, and I just sang. And then the, the dude, uh, Chris Molesky, is the uh, main dude from there, and he's he's busy. He he, he does film now, like um, his own indie film. So he, he doesn't have time to play music. So that's why Masada stopped stopped working. So um, Masada, that's good stuff. That was fun. That was fun. A okay. little metal outfit. Oh, let me go back to an old one. What what kind of drum kit would you recommend for a, a noob looking to start today? Mm. Jesus, I don't know. Regular a nine drum. piece kit. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I would like to say that, but um, nah. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, nowadays it might be best to start with electronic drums, like like they are doing. Now. Everyone's playing with electronic drums. Put it in your fucking apartment, learn to play on that. Then you upgrade to the acoustic set, right? That's what I think, anyway. I mean, depending on what kind of music you're playing. Are you a fan of electro those electronic kits? No, not at all. <laughs> I did. I, I didn't think so. No. Uh, Andy. Andy says any cheap kit will do. Any cheap kit will do. Yeah. 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 So, uh, going back, going back to. Going back to 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 the early days of uh, of playing shows, was there a, besides you Willikers? I, I'm trying to remember other venues kind of in your area. What were some of the other venues that were that you guys could play? I don't know, man. I, there was Studio One in Jersey was good. Um, oh yeah, Roy Fox. Roy Fox always did some good stuff in Kearney, New Jersey. Yeah, um, at um, the name of the fucking place now i can't remember it of course harley's harley's yeah harley's was great <laughs> we played there with gbk and hearse and bludgeon and all, all the bands i was at uh yeah roy did some great shows up there so um i miss those shows i think it's like a 
I think it's like a country bar now or something, a rap bar. <laughs> what? That's what I heard. I don't know, I don't know how true it is, but damn. Those yeah, those days were good, man. Any new any new like stuff you've list, been listening to lately that you maybe recommend? No, nah, I usually go back to the old stuff, you know what I mean? The older bands that I no demos, I mean I can't think. Now I've been listening to the old demos of you know bands that I listened to when I was younger, like Crematory and stuff like that. Fuck yeah. Yeah, so um I mean I I always go back to the the, the early nineties stuff. I mean there there may be some new stuff out that I've listened to that I liked, but um I can't think offhand. Hey, I know you love Hello Waits. Uh, you, you ever thought about doing a track, a cover like uh, from Hello Waits live? Wow, I I would do it absolutely. Yeah, that'd be fucking great. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Kill Again. Uh, I know you always talked about Kill Again. Yeah, that's my favorite song. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that album just. I mean, come on. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, Praise of Death is one of my favorite songs too. I mean, I, I, I think. Yeah. I think it was. I think a Slayer song from Hello Waits would sound great. I, I think we should do that. Yeah, that, you know there what? You go. Now that you said it, now we're gonna do it. We're yeah. gonna do it. So since Spencer's yeah. in here, Spencer, you need to learn. Uh, yeah, tell him Praise of Death will do. <laughs> yeah. Or or the arteries will be fun too. Or did the uh, yeah, you know, any 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 one of them will fucking Well, I heard uh down in Houston, didn't um what was it El Paso? No, it was El Paso. Um what's that band called? Uh Nexum or Nexus or something? Nexel. Like Nexel. Then they do um what's the what's the one? Uh one of uh, the one of the Slayer songs they did off of Hello It's um uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh yeah, it was really, really good. Really only, cool. only, the only band I've seen plays, uh, I've seen do a Slayer cover live. Oath of Cruelty did uh, Necrophiliac. I think. Oh, really? Yeah, it was cool. pretty good. Who did it? Oath of Cruelty. Oath of Cruelty. Yeah, oh. I'm Matt Hafner. I'm Matt Hafner production. <laughs> Matt Hafner production. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, Mer Mer <laughs> Spencer says, "All right, he's gonna learn." Uh, yeah. Praise just it. learn the whole album. Just learn, learn the whole, whole album. Yeah, learn the whole album, please. Well, well yeah. Well, because I remember I used to see you post it, and you haven't done it in a long time, but you used to post videos of you playing, like, Merciful Fate songs and Slayer songs and shit like that. On guitar, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I, I've had problems with <laughs> – it's a long story. This fucking landlord, dude. <laughs> the landlord, uh, the electric in the house. There's, uh, there's always something that, I, that fucks me up that I can't fucking play. There's something wrong with the electric when I plug in my guitar, man, fucking – the feed, there's feedback. It, it, I never had it before. I say, hey, landlord, can you come fix this fucking electric box, dude? Something's going on, right? All right, I'll be over. Never comes. Like, so <laughs> I won't do it now. Blame, blame that fucking goddamn landlord. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's my excuse. But, yeah, that was fun. I, I saved all that shit, dude. Yeah, dude, that's, I, used to, I used to enjoy watching that shit. Yeah, it was fun. I love doing that stuff, man. It's fun. All right, uh, we'll be winding it, winding it, winding it down here. Uh, I have an old flyer from a show at Jack's with Morbius, deceased, and Bludgeon. King always spoke fondly of Jack's. Jack's what's what's uh, Jack's? Uh, Jack's? Is that a venue? It's a venue in um Virginia, I think, or Maryland, one of those. Um, DC, yeah, around that area. But uh, I don't think I think I left Bludgeon at that time when they play if they played there. I don't think I played with Bludgeon down there. Ah. Uh. Because I left Blunged in uh, 2001, I think. But, uh, yeah, they, they might have kept going after me. But, uh, yeah, Bludgeon was fun, too. I play guitar now. Yeah. yeah. That I have. I have I have a, I think it's a CD. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Springfield, Virginia, I think. Yeah, that might be right. where Jax. Yeah. yeah, that's probably where Jax is. I don't, I don't think I've ever played there. Huh. Yeah, I didn't done. First time I ever heard of it. Jax. Jax. Yeah, it's uh yeah, King played there a lot, I think. Yeah. That was, that was the old hangout. <laughs> All right. If anybody has any other questions, put it, please post post them now. We'll be we'll be getting out of here in a few minutes. Uh five minutes. You have five minutes, chat people. There's still a lot of you here, so I know. Uh, it's past my bedtime. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be we'll be letting we'll be uh We'll be winding down, but yeah, man. Thanks again for doing this. I know I've been oh, trying to. Man. I, I've yeah, been I, trying to, trying to I get, get you nervous about doing these fucking things, man. Nah, I don't dude, like, don't I don't like seeing my. 
I don't like seeing my own face fucking yapping away on the fucking screen, dude. Well, I never, I never look at myself. I'm always yeah, I'm, looking. I'm, at I'm looking at you the whole time. Like, <laughs> I look like a giant fat Italian. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've <laughs> never. Yeah, I've never. Uh, yeah, I never look. But I never rewatch these. I don't. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna watch it ever again. But uh, <laughs> I would. I would like to see if anyone's commenting. I mean, but uh, that's no. Yeah, there's there, there's stuff in the chat. I mean, there's been sixty plus people in here to like, be, you know, because anywhere from fifty to sixty people. Yeah, I mean, I can't really see from the, this this the setup I have on this end. I, I can't see what's going on there. But yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, but I, I appreciate you. I, I like this stuff. But. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Like I said, I, I, you know, I wanted to have like been doing this shit two years to the day, and I'm like, I gotta fucking do something. something yeah, I'm glad you finally get on there. Yeah, I yeah, me too. Yeah. If you haven't watched the the six point six six questions with Kaz, go watch that. That was that was the first time he, I, uh, I suckered him into doing this shit. Yeah, you, you <laughs> <Damn. laughs> and everybody on there, hey, bring him on live. So. You know. Yeah, you know, yeah. Now that I'm kind of accustomed to it, I'll, uh, I could do this more often if you like. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Of course, it's, uh, it's, uh. Yeah, being it, put on the spot is tough because then you have to remember. Like, I, sh I can't remember what I did five minutes ago, let alone you know, <laughs> twenty years ago. This is probably an inside joke. Hey, Kaz, where did you get that Sodom shirt? Yeah, every time I get it, every time Ruthie gets me a new shirt, I, I. Spencer asked me where I got it. I said, my <laughs> wife got it for me, Spencer. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, Spencer shouldn't talk shit because ask him about his Slayer shirt that he had to sell. Uh, well, he's, 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 he's hearing me. Yeah, he can hear you. He what got about it? that Slayer shirt? What's, his, what's the story yeah, he, on that? Man, the, that nigga got a fucking Slayer shirt and it was all jacked up. The logo was jacked up. You know how you know how you have the, 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 you know how the, the, the swords making the pentagram, right? <laughs> And it says Slayer on, and 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 the sword was, you know, if you see the regular logo, I don't know, is there one in here? I don't think so. But uh, if the sword goes through one, goes through the A, right, like through through the middle of the A, right. But his didn't go through. It's it, it, <laughs> it was in the front of it. It was like, yo, dude, you got a fucking fucked up Slayer shirt, dude. So yeah, I broke well, his balls about. It. So what he did was put it on eBay and sold the motherfucker. <laughs> he didn't have to wear it anymore. <laughs> Yeah, he's, la he's, he's laughing. He's laughing. That's, that's like uh, don't talk shit on me, buddy. I'll call you right out. I, I, yeah, I mentioned I mentioned it several times, but my my friend bought a battery under the sign of the Black Mart. Yeah, bootleg. It's a fuck total bootleg from from Mexico. And instead of saying under the sign of the Black Mart, it says under the sign of the Black Mo March. So it's totally, <laughs> oh, it's, to it's totally fucked up, man. Oh my god, that's bad, dude. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> he said thanks to you he, he hates that shirt yeah. fucked it all up for him. once I pointed out to him he couldn't wear it again <laughs> you got a shirt, bro. but yeah so cool man well shit man uh, again thanks for doing this man we're gonna go ahead and cut it now everybody all thanks right. for thanks for fucking uh, hanging out in the chat there was quite a few people yeah, thanks uh, that joined today it. so that was cool man uh, I'll have Paul back on. He will be, yeah. He, usually, I have to email him or something. Hey, you want to come on? Uh, so, uh, I so Paul, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, and, Paul, and Roy, uh, Paul's one of my favorite vocals. He's he's dude, great. His vocals oh, are so good. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. A total total original original fucking. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's, yeah. He's yeah. He he was good for our scene back in the day, man. He yeah. He tore it up. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So, cool. uh, stronger than passing time, Patch. What uh, does that mean? <laughs> Some somebody did a somebody did a patch for us. It was our stronger than passing time, and it was a it was a small patch, and it said stronger than passing time. Oh, like, then. Like, <laughs> yeah. So like, we are like, uh, well, I told the dude I said it's then T H A N. And he, he checked with me, and then uh, when he got sent it to print, it came back with then. <laughs> like, oh no! Well, I guess somebody, somebody at that Korean fucking sweatshop didn't listen to what you fucking said. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, uh -oh. somebody got it from you. This guy says he's got one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, now now he's gonna want his money back because he's gonna look at it like, oh, oh fuck. Oh man. No, it's, oh, it's, so far it's, I don't know English, motherfucker. It's, it's a it's a rare press. That's what it's it is. Rare, that's right. You know what? I'm gonna charge extra now. 
Oh um, yeah, Grey Worm. Kevin, I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to Grey Worm on the way to work tomorrow. Yeah, fuck yeah, Grey Worm's good. Yeah, I, 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 out, he puts out a new album every week, man. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> I don't know how he finds the time, dude, to do this, but it's great. He's always putting out some. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, man, thanks. Uh, thanks again. Uh, before we go again, email Kaz at the True Crucifier at live.com and buy some fucking buy some dildos from him. Buy some stuff from him. Yeah, he has fan logo dildos and shit. Yeah, yeah. Butt plugs and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, thank you. Congrats on your uh, two year. Yeah, uh, man. I mean, it's nothing to celebrate or anything like that, but it's just, sure it, it just, just happened to be the second. You- you making any money on this fucking page, dude? Fuck no, I don't make any money, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm this is underground. This is like, this is <laughs> it's like being a crystal bar. Yeah, you don't make money. <laughs> exactly. Don't make you any money. You put money into it, you don't get money out of it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, no. Yeah, dude. Well, but, uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate your time, man. Thank you. But no, no, I appreciate you coming on. Like I said, uh, <laughs> hopefully this gets a little, uh, we'll, we'll have to do it again another time. Again, everybody, thanks for hanging out. I, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I know it's. I, I like to bring cool people on on this fucking show, nice. so appreciate it. I don't. I don't like. You know, there's no. If I brought on like fucking, you know, I, I don't even know. I don't. Don't even want to say any names. But uh, I'll be like Paul. Oh, you know, I can't say any names. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can't say any names. But I'll tell you later. Yeah, but I'll tell you later offline. Yeah, but anyway, offline. cool man. Right. Well, hey, uh, again. Cool, Thanks a lot, brother. I'll, I'll be yeah, in touch. Yeah. All right. I'll and... talk to you. Well, we'll talk. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. All right. All right. Later, bro. man. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. There you go. So thanks again, everybody. That was cool. Fucking Paul Levy and fucking Kaz on the same night. I mean, what do you, what do you guys want from me? What do you want from me? What, what, what's there, what more is there to do than bring on the fucking true of the true of the true underground people underground freaks that are still at it you know still at it it's not these people that recorded a demo uh, 35 years ago and disappeared these guys are true they're still at it still going strong still releasing fucking badass shit so appreciate it yeah buy some stuff man buy some stuff from cassie buy it straight from the band do me do me a personal favor and buy some shit from Cass directly from the man himself. So I bought stuff from him, you can too. So don't be a dick. Support, support the true people uh, that have been doing it forever since the beginning. Since the beginning. Yeah, dude, it was cool. It took a while, but I, I, I you know, just gotta wait. Gotta wait around. So it's, so it's the time. Uh, it was the right time, and we finally figured out. It was cool that I was able to get both of them on the same day. It's not easy to do. People are busy. So, anyway, tell everybody about the show. Go watch it. Do all that shit. Uh, and see all you crazy fucks. This one is called. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but, uh...